Hi everyone, this is Maths for Uni. This is the work solution to questions 9 and 10 from lecture 8. If you enjoy this content, then please consider liking and subscribing, as well as checking out our full Udemy course, of which the link is in the description. The question says, we call an n by n matrix A anti-symmetric if A transpose equals minus A. Suppose n is odd. Use the result of the previous question along with debt of A transpose equals debt A for all matrices A to find the determinant of A. The result of the previous question is the one that we considered in the previous video, i.e. that debt of AB is equal to debt of A times debt of B for all matrices A and B. The determinant of the product of matrices is the product of the determinants. We want to find the determinant of A as part of this question. We note that debt A equals debt of minus A transpose since A is anti-symmetric, i.e. we used this result here. At this point, we want to use that debt of A transpose is always equal to debt of A. However, we should be careful because of this minus sign that we have. So we need to split up our debt of minus A transpose using the product of determinants result. Notice that minus A transpose is equal to minus the identity matrix multiplied by a transpose, where I is the n by n identity matrix. Hence, from the result of the product of determinants, we have that debt of minus A transpose, which we're looking at here from debt A, is equal to debt of minus I times debt of A transpose by using this result here and this result here. Then we should next calculate the debt of minus i, since it's an explicit matrix that we can consider, whereas A is some general anti-symmetric matrix. Minus i is the matrix that has minus one in each of its diagonal elements, with every other element being a zero, which we can write like this. There are n minus ones here because it is an n by n identity matrix, and therefore the determinant of minus i is equal to minus one to the power of n. This we can show inductively, but we won't do so formally here because you can imagine working out the determinant of minus i by doing minus 1 times the determinant of this matrix here where we get rid of this column and this row but this matrix here will be the n minus 1 by n minus 1 identity matrix then we go down continually inductively using this and either way we end up by picking up n factors of minus 1. Now we were told in the question that n is odd and so minus 1 to the n is minus 1. This tells us that the determinant of a that we want to calculate is equal to this thing here, which is equal to, as we showed, this thing here. Then we have, since this is minus 1, 
we have minus debt of a transpose, but we were told that debt of a transpose is equal to the determinant of a, so this is minus debt of a. The only number such that you get it being equal to minus itself is zero, and therefore the determinant of a must be zero. Now, to finish off with this question at least, if we weren't careful with the minus sign in this determinant of minus a transpose, then we would have ignored a small subtlety. If n is even, then this result that we've shown here is not true, because minus 1 to the n is plus 1, and so we'd get debt a equals debt a, which is fine. As a result, we cannot get debt a equals 0 like we did above. However, if we were to wrongly just proceed ahead and assume that in full generality, debt of minus a transpose is equal to minus debt of a transpose, i.e. pulling out the minus sign, then we would get the wrong, wrong conclusion for the case that n is even, because this result here only works when n is odd, as we showed. Next, let's discuss question 10. The question says, show that if a and b are anti-symmetric, then a plus b is also anti-symmetric. Suppose further that a and b commute. Show that a b is symmetric. Finally, it asks, what is the trace of an anti-symmetric matrix? And there is a hint for this question that a b all transpose is b transpose a transpose, i.e. we reverse the order. Firstly, if we assume, as we're told to, that a and b are anti-symmetric, then we have that a transpose is equal to minus a, and that b transpose is equal to minus b. Then we want to show that a plus b is anti-symmetric. This means that we want to show that a plus b all transpose is equal to minus a plus b. And I'll put a question mark here because we need to show this. If we look at the left hand side, then we first have that a plus b all transpose is equal to a transpose plus b transpose. And this is just by separating out the transpose over addition, which should be fairly clear. If it's not, then have a go at putting in some example matrices to convince yourself. Then because A transpose is minus A and B transpose is minus B, we get minus A minus B here, which by factorizing is minus A plus B. Indeed, therefore, A plus B is anti-symmetric. Next, we want to show that A times B is symmetric given also that a and b commute, i.e. we want to show that the matrix a times b transpose is equal to a times b, just like anti-symmetry but without the minus sign. Firstly, using the hint, we have that the left-hand side is equal to b transpose times by a transpose. Then we can use the anti-symmetry of a and b. Then we have minus b for b transpose and minus a for a transpose. The minus signs cancel because there are two of them and so we get b times a. And then finally, as we were told to assume, we can use that a and b commute 
and so the order in which they're multiplied do not matter. So b times a is the same as a times b. Therefore, we have shown via this chain that AB is a symmetric matrix. Lastly, the question asks us about the trace of an anti-symmetric matrix. Recall that the trace is the sum of the diagonal elements of the matrix, and so it only makes sense when the matrix is square. What do the diagonal elements look like for an anti-symmetric matrix? Well, any elements on the leading diagonal are unaffected by transposition. So let's say we have our matrix here, and for our trace, we add up the elements which are here along the diagonal, and because we have an anti-symmetric matrix, we have a transpose equals minus a. When we transpose this matrix, it's unaffected by the transpose because these elements are on the diagonal. See for yourself that when you take a diagonal matrix and you transpose it, or rather ignore that, when you transpose a matrix, the elements on the diagonal do not actually move. However, when you transpose, because we have an anti-symmetric matrix here, we get a minus sign. Combining these results together with that minus sign in particular tells us that the diagonal entries must be zero. As such, the trace of an anti-symmetric matrix, let's say A, is equal to zero because it is the sum of these diagonal elements, each of which are zero. If you found this content helpful, then please consider liking and subscribing, as well as checking out our full Udemy course, of which the link is in the description. Thanks for watching, and goodbye for now.